Our mission is to maintain and restore vision in patients who otherwise would be going blind as a result of an inherited retinal disease. And as such, we're focused on using AAV to deliver a corrective copy of the gene in these particular patients. We were spun out of the University of Oxford in 2013, and we have in our shop seven retinal programs, all specifically focused on inherited retinal diseases. Today, we're 25 employees, and we're co-located between Boston and London. And we're listed on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol NITE. So our lead program is for choroideremia, and we intend on entering phase three pivotal trials in the first part of 2018. We've already manufactured our phase three drug material, and we've done so at commercial scale. We've also seen in our phase one, two trials, a durable and robust signal. We've seen patients out five years and still tracking. And we have multiple programs in the clinic, and while these are in rare diseases, these are substantial addressable patient populations between 10,000 and 20,000 between Europe and the US. So our pipeline beyond choroideremia, in the clinic we have an X-linked RPGR program. We've already begun our phase one, two trial. We've finished our second cohort. We intend on having a readout of those early patients in 2018. Our third program is for best macular dystrophy. We intend on being in the clinic in 2019. And then a fourth program we recently brought on board from Oxford is for Stargardt's disease. And we're in preclinical activities on that program. And importantly, for all those programs, we maintain the worldwide rights. So a quick primer on choroideremia, excellent disease. It's slowly progressing, and it leads inevitably to blindness. And it's a result of the a mutation in the CHM gene, which encodes for the REP1 protein. REP1 protein is an escort protein, so it's responsible for trafficking intracellular waste out of both the photoreceptors and the retinal pigment epithelium. So we have a waste management problem. If you don't get rid of these toxins, ultimately it kills the cells, which leads to blindness. It goes through three characteristic phases. The first phase is night blindness. Usually the patients present when they're in their teens. Then it moves into the peripheral vision, the mid-peripheral vision. As the disease moves across the central part of the macula, patients lose their central vision, using, usually losing all their vision by their 50s. And you can see on the right-hand panel that bottom picture is a photograph of a choroideremia patient's retina. The yellow area is basically dead, non-seen retina. The area that we're targeting is the area in that white circle. That's the viable retinal tissue that's remaining in these patients. The way that we're delivering is through a transvitreal subretinal procedure. The image on your left shows you what the physician currently sees through the intraoperative microscope. You can see the needle, the 42 gauge needle going into the macula. You can also see that it's very difficult to gauge the depth. So what we've incorporated going forward into our phase three trials is real-time intraoperative OCT from Zeiss so that the physician can actually see the bleb being formed and actually confirm that they've got the drug into the correct space, which we think significantly de-risks the phase three program. Now, when you speak to patients with this disease, what they're looking to do is to salvage the remaining vision that they have. So they're looking for maintenance, and of course, that's our goal to establish over time. But of course, running a maintenance trial in a slowly progressing disease is a recipe for a very long trial. So we're looking at a regulatory strategy which allows us to identify hyper-responders or patients that have had 15-letter gains. We know that's an acceptable endpoint. We also don't expect to see 15-letter gains in a treatment arm. And we ourselves, in our phase 1-2 trial, have seen improvements. In fact, when we look at our phase 1-2 data, out of 19 patients between 2040 and 2200, we saw four patients that had a 15-letter improvement out at 12 months, or 21%. Contrast that to our natural history trial data where we saw out of 156 patients, similar matched patients in VA, 2040 to 2200, we saw two patients or 1%. So that delta of 20%, we believe, gives us a clear pathway to regulatory approval if we can replicate that in our phase three trial. And in fact, if we show that delta, we would be in good company with other retinal products that have been improved in this space. So if you look at our overall program, it's a comprehensive choroideremia program and robust. The top two trials 
are the trials that we've already completed. They're investigator-sponsored trials, 14 patients treated at Oxford, another 18 treated at three other investigator-sponsored sites. The middle bar there shows you ongoing trials. So we have our Regenerate trial. We're looking at patients here who have early stage disease and limited VA loss with the hope that we can show earlier intervention is appropriate. The night study is our observational trial where we have all the patients now in that trial who will roll right into our phase three trial. And the last two trials are the regulatory requirements to get approval for the drug. Gemini is a bilateral treatment and STAR is our phase three pivotal trial. Thank you very much.